Part One. Question One. Listen to this news item. The firemen rescued a three children. B. Mrs. Janet Sherwood. C. Patients from All Saints Hospital. Three children, aged six, four, and eighteen months, were rescued from their blazing home by firemen last night. The firemen were alerted by the children's mother, Mrs. Janet Sherwood, when a faulty electric heater in the children's bedroom set fire to the upstairs of the house. The children were not hurt, but are being kept overnight at nearby All Saints Hospital for observation. Question two. Listen to these instructions. You should let tea brew for a two minutes, b three minutes, c one minute. So, how do you make a really good cup of tea? Well, first of all, put fresh water in the kettle and bring it to the boil. Use the steam from the kettle to warm the inside of the teapot. Then add the tea. Use one teaspoon per person and one for the pot. Be sure to use good tea. Then pour the boiling water onto the tea leaves and allow to brew for three minutes. Pour it into cups. Add milk and sugar to taste, and there you have a really good cup of tea. Question three. Listen to this conversation. Danny intends to contact local companies by a ringing them, b writing to them, c calling round. So that's it, Millie. I've lost my job. What'll you do now, Danny? You'll have to get a job. It's not easy. I could try writing to all the companies I used to deal with. Yeah, they'll know you and what you can do. Why not ring them and speak to them? I'm sure they'll help. Actually, I'll call round. Most of them are local, and I can make a better impression in person. Question four. Listen to this transaction. Where does the exchange take place? A. In a shop. B. In a bank. C. In a taxi. That'll be four pounds and ninety-four pence, please. Four ninety-four. Oh, I don't think I have that exactly.、Uh, Do you have change? Well, I'm a bit low on coins, but notes are no problem. What have you got? I've only got a twenty-pound note. Okay, give me that. You haven't got four p, have you? Oh, I think so. Here,、uh, two pence pieces. Fifteen pounds and ten pence change. Thank you very much. Question five. Listen to this announcement on board an aircraft. The purpose of the announcement is to inform passengers. A, of a delay. B, of the entertainment available. C, of the latest news. Welcome aboard Air Transatlantic Flight 465 to Miami. We are sorry to announce there is a delay of about half an hour to takeoff time. This is due to industrial action. We hope this delay won't inconvenience you. While we are waiting for our takeoff slot, the cabin staff will be circulating amongst you to distribute complimentary drinks and magazines. In the meantime, please remain seated. We do hope you enjoy Transatlantic's hospitality. Question six. Listen to this recorded telephone message. You have phoned a a library, b a telephone ordering service. C. A post office. Thank you for calling the Bargain Traders Order Line. Your call is being queued. Meanwhile, please make sure you have the following information available, as it will help our staff process your order quickly and accurately. First, we will need your credit card type, its number, and its expiry date. Second, we will need details of your order. For each item you wish to order, please tell us the item code, the color, the size, and the quantity you require. Your order will be sent today, but please allow one week for postal delivery. Question seven. 
Listen to the end of this speech. The speech takes place at a A. Birthday B. Christening C. Wedding And I'm sure we all wish the happy couple many years of happiness and every best wish for the future. But now one last pleasant duty, if you will fill your glasses, and that is to ask you to raise your glasses for a toast to the health of the bridesmaids. Ladies and gentlemen, the bridesmaids. Question 8. Listen to this conversation which takes place in a dress shop. Brenda thinks the red dress, A, is too long, B, doesn't suit her, C, makes her look short. I'm not sure about this one. It's a bit long. Why don't you try this red one on, Brenda? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's not quite me. Well, the blue one really suited you. It made you look uh, taller. Do you think so? Excuse me, miss. Could I try the blue one on again? And now, with the news of this week's travel competition, here's Anne Macroft. Thanks, Bob. Let's start with the prize for this week's competition. And the prize is a visit to a castle, but not just any old castle. It's a castle which rises through the mists of the Bavarian Alps. It has white walls, towers, turrets and spires, and looks just like the fairy tale castle you see in Walt Disney films. And that's because it is the model Walt Disney really did use for the castles he put in films such as Cinderella, it's the castle at Neuschwanstein in Germany. This week's winners will spend two weeks as the guests of the show in the land of one of the most unusual monarchs of the last century. It was King Ludwig II of Bavaria who created this amazing architectural masterpiece over a hundred years ago in 1881. He was known as the Dream King since he took very little interest in the politics of his time, the growth of a unified Germany and the wars of the time. He really much preferred the world of legends and fairy tales, myths and operas, architecture and the arts. The castle at Neuschwanstein is his attempt to capture some of the magic of the age of chivalry. It still looks magical enough to attract more than a million tourists a year. That's our first prize. And for the runners-up, we have commissioned ten models of the castle. But these aren't just any old models. They've been made by Don Leake, who spent months researching, sculpting and refining every nuance and tiny detail of the castle in porcelain and resin. He's painted each one entirely by hand and presented it on a polished wooden display base. Only ten will be made, and each one will have a certificate of authenticity. They're absolutely wonderful and will grace any home. So what do you have to do to win the holiday or the model castle? It's very simple, and it'll show how hard you've been listening to the programme. For this program, our reporters visited ten towns in six countries. We want you to name the reporters and the towns and countries they visited in the same order you heard them. That should be easy for most of you. So, as a tie break, we want you also to say which of those towns you would most like to visit and say why. Put your answers on a postcard, please, and send it to... That's the end of part two. Hotel One. This truly superb hotel is set in 30 acres of parkland deep in the heart of Kent. It is very close to historic Leeds Castle. It contains a brand new health park which was recently opened by Olympic gold medalist and MP Sebastian Coe. There's a health and fitness assessment center, an indoor pool, a whirlpool spa bath, saunas, solarium, gym, floodlit tennis courts, and an 18-hole golf course. Rooms are available for our special rate of £50 per night. Hotel 2 Originally built as a monastery, this hotel still retains much of the peace and tranquility along with its historic remains. It retains its original Great Hall and overlooking this is the Gallery Restaurant, which has earned two Michelin stars and an international reputation for the best food and wines. Set deep in the Scottish countryside, it is ideal for the get-away-from-it-all holiday. There are many walks to appreciate the beautiful moorland scenery, and our specially trained staff are on hand to advise on Alexander and relaxation techniques. Hotel 3 
This country house style hotel overlooks the scenic ruins of Tintern Abbey on the border between Wales and England. It is set in an area of great rural beauty, and is ideal for quiet relaxation and country walks. The hotel has excellent catering facilities and its own extensive parkland, which includes a deer park, a grouse moor, and its own stretch of the River Wye. Holiday breaks can include in-season fishing for salmon. And shooting for both grouse and deer. If you wish, these can later be prepared for you by our expert chefs. Hotel Four. Set in sixteen acres of private parkland, this Regency-style hotel has every modern comfort and convenience. This hotel is an ideal base from which to explore Warwickshire and the surrounding area. It is only six miles from Warwick itself, which boasts the finest medieval castle in England. It is three miles from Packwood House, which still possesses its sixteenth-century ornamental gardens, and it is four miles from Stratford, the birthplace of Shakespeare, where the house he was born in and the school he attended are open to visitors. Hotel Five. This hotel is situated in the heart of historic London. It is an ideal base for visiting the sites such as the Tower of London or Madame Tussauds, and day trips can be arranged at the customer assistance desk situated in the hotel foyer. It is also an ideal base for visiting the stores, being within easy walking distance of Oxford Street, Regent Street, and Harrods itself. In the evenings, the hotel is able to offer customers the chance to visit some famous London shows such as the Phantom of the Opera and Cats. That's the end of part three. And welcome to today's program, where Mrs. Mary Higgins, a frequent traveller on Luton's buses, has the chance to voice some complaints, which many of us will probably support. To John Gardner, the town's transport manager, Mrs. Higgins, where would you like to begin? With the timetable, or rather, the lack of one you can trust. I thought that when these timetables were printed, they made allowances for rush hour traffic, the time of day, and all that. But I've never once known a bus to be on time. I would have expected better. True enough, Mrs. Higgins. We do try to anticipate these things, but then something comes along we're not prepared for, like a demonstration or a diversion, and we can't go issuing new timetables to take account of that. We'd be forever rushing back and forth to the printers. But isn't it possible to find some way to alert passengers of some unforeseen situations? Couldn't you put signs up?、Uh, we've thought of that, but it's not really practical.、Uh, we'd have to have a man rushing around all day putting signs on bus stops. Uh, that would mean increased costs and inevitably higher fares. That's another thing. Free fare increases in the past year. They're not much cheaper than taxes, and I can assure you that if there's another increase, that's how I'd be travelling.、Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Higgins. But when costs increase, we are bound to raise fares to remain profitable. Well, why don't you use some of that extra money to keep the buses clean? I can't bear to sit surrounded by litter and offensive slogans.、Uh, the buses are cleaned each night, Mrs. Higgins, and always have been. Uh, there are litter bins on each bus, but they don't seem to make a difference. If passengers are in the habit of just dropping things around them, such provisions don't alter the situation. Well, if one thing has come out of today's exchange of views, it's the value of an occasional get-together so people can get things off their chest and explanations can be made. It might be a good idea to repeat this in the not too distant future. Oh, I'm certainly more than willing to do that. Me too, if I can find a bus, but I can't really see things changing a great deal. That's the end of part four. That's the end of the test. Please stop now. Goodbye.